Hello everyone, this is Todd with Nitality, and today we're going to go over step 9 on the food ladder, which is pull vitality out of your food. And this is one of my favorite steps, although maybe the one of the more difficult ones for me to explain, because we don't tend to think of our food that way. Um, but it's somewhat important to remember that the food that you eat is fueling you, that it's giving you energy, that it's giving you some vitality for the day. And consciously remembering that when you eat, is has an interesting impact on you. It's another great way to interact with your body and get back into it. It's a nice way to start understanding, like changing your understanding of food and why you eat. Most people are eating just often for pleasure or like as a habit, like a sneeze or something like that. And so we often forget that one of the main aspects, perhaps the main aspect of food, is fueling your system, giving you resources to rebuild, helping you get through your day and doing all the things that you want to do. And so the vitality that comes from the food is really important. And remembering it when you eat changes the experience. Although maybe not at first, you might have to play with this for a little while until it starts to feel a little bit differently for you. When you do that, you begin to realize that some foods that you enjoy the taste for don't give you much vitality. Some foods that you enjoy the taste of a little bit less do give you a lot more vitality. And as you play with it and you start to understand that it's changing how your day goes, how much energy you have and the things that you can do with it, you can start to change what you eat and when and why. It'll start to naturally occur to you that, you know, I'd rather have this because I'm going to feel better through the day. I'm going to have energy to do these things I want to do. Maybe I want to play some guitar or go for a long drive or go on a wonderful date or get through my work feeling great or at least better than I am now, and you start to recognize how much the food influences that, how much vitality it gives you, how much life it's bringing to you, how good you feel after you eat it. Those are important concepts. And so this idea of pulling vitality out of your food is partly that. It's understanding that you're getting a lot of your resources for life from that food. You're also getting it from the air you breathe, which is interesting to think about when you're in you say polluted air or when you're in clean air and some of the benefits of going into nature and being around trees. It's another place you can think of as pulling vitality out of is the air that you breathe. Um, another thing that you can play with this is, and this is a little bit more of um, an interesting mental game, is when you're eating, actually feeling in your body like some of the energy is coming into you from it. And it's a bit of a mental thing. It's a bit of um, an emotional thing. It can make an interesting difference. <clears throat> And maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't make necessarily a lot of sense to you right at the beginning. And for some people, it may not have that much usefulness. But I found it useful to actually think about when I was eating that food, feeling its change in my system, like it's actually giving me some vitality. Like I'm actually imagining that vitality filling up my body and changing how it feels and how it does. Some of the old methods that had to do with breathing, that had to do with Ayurveda and yoga and some of the martial arts, they would have you breathe in that kind of way. It's like you breathe the air in and you feel this energy go out into your body and fuel it. And you can do the same thing with your food. You can do them together, interestingly, at the same meal. While you're breathing, you feel that sensation going through. And when you're eating, you can feel that same sensation moving through your body. And you're playing with your mind in an interesting way. You're playing with your imagination. You're playing with your emotions. And it's interesting how much your mind and your emotions affect your body. And so you can really calm it down in an interesting way while you're eating by trying to feel that pull of vitality from the food into your body. As you'll do that, you'll notice certain foods feel more, more vital to you, like you're getting more out of them. For instance, I'm going to do much better with a nice soup broth that I made than maybe Skittles, where Skittles don't feel like they have that same vitality to me that the soup does. It's probably not true when I first started. It's something that I've picked up over time, but there's this interesting process you can teach yourself. As you eat, think about that food, think about what's going on with it, sort of feel it, like emotionally feel kind of a little excited about it because it's going to fuel you up a little bit. And it changes the whole experience. Now you're feeding your mind, you're feeding your emotions, you're feeding your body. And I think there's something interesting that goes on between your mind and your body and your emotions at that time. There's a pickup of everything within you when you do that. So often people sit there kind of, I don't know, reading the news. And that's going to put your body into a bit of a, a scared and nervous state because the news is almost all terrible things happening, things to be scared of. And that's going to switch your body into an interesting kind of sympathetic mode where your digestion is slowing down. And this process we're talking about here is a bit of the opposite. How do you get into a parasympathetic mode where digestion is more what your body is aimed at? 
And so you can practice this feeling of vitality, of pulling some of the energy out of the food. And like I said, you're doing this with your mind, you're playing with your imagination, you're playing with an emotional sense here, like how does that feel into your body? You're playing with a sensation, like how does your body feel? Like can you feel that sort of connection to your body as you eat, like that the energy is going out into your body? Uh, it's an interesting process and one that's fun to play with and it really can teach you something about your imagination and it can become really interesting. It'll change how you see your food. It'll change how you see your body. You can change your breathing while you're doing it. You know, be sitting there going, oh, okay, this feels really interesting to me. And the food changes and the experience changes and keeps you out of negative areas with your mind, which is an interesting thing to practice in itself. How do you keep your mind on things that feel good? Maybe one of the, like, might be the basis of how to have a happy life is where you aim your attention and where you aim your mind and where they're typically going. And this is a nice way to train it. Again, you don't have to sit there for two hours. I talked about this in the last principle, but you know, if you can do this for five or 10 minutes, that's wonderful. It'll take some practice. At first, you'll find your mind wandering all over the place. It's almost like a meditative practice for your, your food and for your meal times and for changing your day a few times a day if you eat often. So it can be a little meditation practice as well as something that builds your vitality over time, changes how you feel about your diet, changes how you feel about your body, changes how you're using your imagination and your attention. So it's multi-purpose. It's actually starting to reach out into many parts of you. And one of the things I'm really passionate about is helping people reconnect their mind to their body, their emotions to their body, their mind to their emotions, the three of them together, and also with the energy system that's in your body. Um, we don't really think about it that much in the West because um, it can get into some interesting areas. But if you just think about even the cellular energy or the energy you're getting from the food, the energy you're getting from oxygenation and from the breath in and out, you can really start to see that there's something going on interesting that powers you and gets you through the day. So there's a lot of things happening. And one of the things, like I was just mentioning, is, is reconnecting everything in a sort of conscious way so that all these different parts of you aren't happening to you so much and you have much more conscious control or and the ability to conduct your emotions, which is the way I like to think about it, like almost conducting a symphony. And I talk about that a lot more in book two, um, Our Brain, Why Do You Trouble Me So Much, which may be interesting to you. So I hope this finds you well. It's a wonderful principle. It's one of my favorite ones, and it really reaches into a lot of different parts of you and can really help you connect to yourself. So try to pull the vitality out of your food. If you can, practice breathing that way. Try to pull the vitality out of the air. Um, and try to get the most vitality for your life that you can. It makes you feel alive. It's the root of that word vitality has to do with life. And the more life you feel, the better experience you're going to have. All right. Stay vital, my friends. Until next time.